the concept of witchcraft and the belief in its existence have persisted throughout recorded history. Witchcraft traditionally means the use of magic or supernatural powers to harm others. The practitioner is called a witch. During medieval and early modern Europe, where the term originated, accused witches were usually women, who were believed to have attacked their own community, and often to have commoned with evil beings. It was thought witchcraft could be thwarted by protective magic or counter, magic, which could be provided by cunning folk, or folk healers. Suspected witches were also intimidated, banished, attacked or killed. Often they would be formally prosecuted and punished, if found guilty or simply believed to be guilty. European witch hunts and witch trials in the early modern period led to tens of thousands of executions. Although some folk healers were accused of witchcraft, they made up a minority of those accused. European belief in witchcraft gradually dwindled during and after the Age of Enlightenment. It has been found at various times and in many forms among cultures worldwide and continues to have an important role in some cultures today. Most societies have believed in, and feared, an ability by some individuals to cause supernatural harm and misfortune to others. This may come from mankind's tendency to want to assign occurrences of remarkable good or bad luck to agency, either human or superhuman. Witchcraft is seen by historians and anthropologists as one ideology for explaining misfortune, which has manifested in diverse ways. Some cultures have feared witchcraft much less than others, because they instead believed that strange misfortune was usually caused by gods, spirits, demons or fairies, or by other humans who have unwittingly cast the evil eye. The Western mainstream Christian view is far from the only societal perspective about witchcraft. Many cultures worldwide continue to have widespread practices and cultural beliefs that are loosely translated into English as witchcraft, although the English translation masks a very great diversity in their forms, magical beliefs, practices, and place in their societies. During the age of colonialism, many cultures across the globe were exposed to the modern Western world via colonialism, usually accompanied and often preceded by intensive Christian missionary activity. In these cultures beliefs that were related to witchcraft and magic were influenced by the prevailing Western concepts of the time. Witch hunts, scapegoating, and the killing or shunning of suspected witches still occur in the modern era. Witchcraft accusations against children in Africa have received increasing international attention in the first decade of the 21st century. The phenomenon of witch hunts in sub-Saharan Africa is ancient, but the problem is reportedly on the rise. Recent reports by United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, Save the Children and Human Rights Watch have also highlighted the violence and abuse towards children accused of witchcraft in Africa. Accusations of witchcraft in Africa are a very serious matter as the witch is culturally understood to be the epitome of evil and the cause of all misfortune, disease and death. Consequently, the witch is the most hated person in African society and subjected to punishment, torture and even death. One of the first three women to be accused of witchcraft in the Salem Witch Trials, which occurred in 1692 in colonial Massachusetts, was Sarah Good. She was born on July 21, 1655, in Wenham. Massachusetts Bay Colony. The daughter of a well-to-do tavern owner in Wenham, Massachusetts named John Solart. 
In 1672, when she was 16 years old, her father committed suicide. His 70-acre estate was valued around 500 pounds, and he didn't leave a will. At the time of his death, the Solarts were one of many families involved in land disputes around Salem. The estate was divided mostly between his widow and two sons, with only a small allotment to be shared among seven daughters, however, even this was denied to the girls by their mother's new husband. Sarah Good, was left with no dowry and no prospects beyond marriage to an indentured servant named Daniel Poole, who left her heavily in debt when he died soon after. On March 6, 1692 Sarah Good was accused of witchcraft, when Abigail Williams and Elizabeth Paris, related to the Reverend Samuel Paris, claimed to be bewitched under her hand. The young girls asserted they had been bitten, pinched, and otherwise abused. They would have fits in which their bodies would appear to involuntarily convulse, their eyes rolling into the back of their heads and their mouths hanging open. When the Reverend Samuel Paris asked who torments you, the girls eventually shouted out the names of three townspeople, Tituba, Sarah Osborne, and Sarah Good. Sarah's daughter, Dorothy was only four years old at the time. On March 24, she was taken custody, and was interrogated, by the local magistrates for two weeks. The child was hungry, cold and missing her mother. Dorothy broke down and told the Inquisitors what they wanted to hear, that her mother was a witch, consorted with the devil, and also that her mother had given her a snake that bit her. On March 25, 1692, Sarah Good was tried for witchcraft. She was accused of rejecting the puritanical expectations of self-control and discipline when she chose to torment and scorn instead of leading them towards the path of salvation. When she was brought in, the accusers immediately began to rock back and forth and moan, seemingly in response to Good's presence. Later in the trial, one of the accusers fell into a fit. When it had stopped, she claimed Good had attacked her with a knife. She even produced a portion of it, stating the weapon had been broken during the alleged assault. However, upon hearing this statement, a young townsman stood and told the court the piece had broken off his own knife the day before, and that the girl had witnessed it. He then revealed the other half, proving his story. After hearing this, Judge William Stoughton, simply scolded the girl for exaggerating what he believed to be the truth. Although both Good and Sarah Osborne denied the allegations against them, Tituba admitted to being the devil's servant. She stated that a tall man dressed all in black came to them, demanding they sign their names in a great book. Although initially refusing, Tituba said, she eventually wrote her name, after Sarah Good and Osborne forced her to. There were six other names in the book as well but were not visible to her. She also said that Sarah Good had ordered her cat to attack Elizabeth Hubbard, causing the scratches and bite marks on the girl's body. She spoke of seeing Good with black and yellow birds surrounding her and that Sarah Good had also sent these animals to harm the girls. When the girls began to have another fit, Tituba claimed she could see a yellow bird in Good's right hand. The young accusers agreed. When Sarah Good was allowed the chance to defend herself in front of the twelve jurors in the Salem Village Meeting House, she argued her innocence proclaiming Tituba and Osborne as the real witches. In the end, however, Good was convicted of witchcraft and sentenced to death. On July 29th Sarah Good was hanged along with four other women convicted of witchcraft. 
while the other four quietly awaited execution, Good firmly proclaimed her innocence. Sarah Good was pregnant at the time of her arrest and gave birth to an infant in her cell in the jail in Ipswich. The infant died before her mother was hanged. Reverend Nicholas Noyes was persistent, but unsuccessful, in his attempts to force Good to confess. When she was found guilty by the judges, including Noyes, according to legend she yelled to him, I'm no more a witch than you are a wizard, and if you take away my life God will give you blood to drink. It was reported 25 years after the hanging of Sarah Good, Noyes died from choking on his own blood. In 1710, William Good the husband of Sarah Good, successfully sued the Great and General Court for health and mental damages done to Sarah and Dorothy, ultimately receiving £30 sterling, one of the largest sums granted to the families of the witchcraft victims. The proceedings against Good were described as cruel, and shameful to the highest degree. This remark must have been due in part to the fact that some of the spectral evidence against Good was known to be false at the time of her examination. Thank you for watching Death Row.